Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today we have a practice question related to the musculoskeletal system. As you recall, as we go through this podcast, we go through the FSBPT content outline starting from the top to bottom and then we restart on, well, we've done it a number of times now. But today is about the musculoskeletal system. This is the largest system on the exam with somewhere between 51 and 60 questions related to it. So I do have a practice question for you. But before we get to that, just a quick reminder to check out ptfinalexam.com. We do have ongoing group discounts and cohort discounts if you have a group of five or more, or if you'd like to get your university cohort in, we have a fabulous discount. You can email us over at ptfinalexam.com slash contact to get more information there. If you are a class president or representative of some way for your cohort, we can help you get a pretty sweet discount on all of our courses. We have ongoing courses, including our VIP course, our premium classes, as well as our crash courses. Be sure to check out ptfinalexam.com for all the information that you need and sign up for any of the classes. So today we'll be talking musculoskeletal and I've got a question for you queued up. We'll go through the question as per our usual. I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, then we'll talk about the answers together. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the question. A 10-year-old patient or a 10-year-old child with a primary complaint of posterior heel pain is being assessed by a physical therapist. The patient reports general achilodynia and pain near the insertion of the Achilles tendon, and the calcaneal epiphysis is tender to palpation. Which of the following conditions is most likely present? So again, a 10-year-old child with a primary complaint of posterior heel pain is being assessed by a physical therapist. The patient reports general achilodynia and pain near the insertion of the Achilles tendon, and the calcaneal epiphysis is tender to palpation. Which of the following conditions is most likely present? Number one, Achilles tendon rupture. Two, Hagland deformity. Three, Talipes equinus. Four, Severs disease. So we have Achilles tendon rupture, Hagland deformity, Talipes equinus, and Severs disease. All right, so this question, obviously talking about a 10-year-old child, we've got a, a pediatric case here with the primary complaint of posterior heel pain. Now, all of the options that are listed here, Achilles tendon rupture, Hagland deformity, Talipes equinus, more or less, Severs disease, all of these can result in retrocalcaneal pain. However, as we go through the question, we see more information that leads us toward the correct answer. So we have general achilodynia, so that's pain or a painful Achilles tendon, and especially pain near the insertion point of the Achilles tendon, and the calcaneal epiphysis is tender to palpation. So that's maybe the key to this whole question is that epiphyseal plate or the growth plate of the calcaneus is tender. We see that correlated with the age of the child that this patient is going, uh, clearly has not reached full adult maturity yet. So which of the following conditions is most likely present? Well, the correct answer is number four, Severs disease. So Severs disease, this is that calcaneal apophysitis that's associated with young children. Oftentimes, I mean, it can be associated with childhood athletes spending a lot of time running and jumping, but it's that, that pull of the Achilles on the calcaneus that pulls the epiphyseal plate. That's such a fun word to say. The epiphyseal plate pulls it apart so you get some discomfort on the retro on the posterior aspect of the calcaneus, especially considering the age of the child. These other options, Achilles tendon rupture, one of the primary indicators of Achilles tendon rupture would be a palpable gap in the Achilles tendon. And often there is a traumatic episode or some type of incident associated with the Achilles tendon rupture or some, some very specific instant when it occurred. So in this case, we don't have the palpable gap, although it is in the general region, the history doesn't line up quite as well. And then again, considering the age of the child, you'd think, all right, Achilles tendon rupture, not quite as likely in a small child, maybe in an older adult possible. The Hagland deformity, also known as the pump bump, this is when you get exostosis or a, a callus and bony deformity on the calcaneus, but often this is due to runners and it's not necessarily a childhood illness. And so while it can result in posterior heel pain, it doesn't fit quite as well, again, with the age of the child, nor with the history here, where we have achilodynia and calcaneal epiphyseal pain. Rather, the key, key with Hagland or pump bump deformity 
is that you would have a visible palpable bony growth, an excess or an exostosis of bony growth on the posterior calcaneus. And then finally, Talipes equinovarus or Talipes equinus. These are, I mean, I guess to put it simplistically, these are toe walkers. These are children that have a contracture of the calcaneus, or not the calcaneus, of the gastrocnemius and soleus. So they have a contracture preventing dorsiflexion. But what that means is that they are stuck in plantar flexion and they are often walking on their toes. So they cannot dorsiflex. And so therefore they tend to walk on their toes. And so looking at the at the name here, Talipes equinus, that's just talking about like the horse's foot, meaning that it looks like they're walking on a horse's hoof. If you look at horse's hooves, it kind of has a, a similar look and feel to it. So Talipes equinus, that's the toe walker. So finally leaves us with Severs disease, the correct answer here, which is calcaneal apophysitis, which is typically in children where the growth plate or the epiphyseal plate of the calcaneus tends to come apart. As far as your intervention strategies would obviously be protection, try to protect ex excess forces on the calcaneus, so possibly some type of walking splint, and then also uh, some type of infl inflammation or inflammatory reduction strategy, talking about ice and, yeah, ice and protection. So rest, ice, compression, elevation, all those things would be of key import in trying to manage a child with Severs disease. So there you go. That's our question about the musculoskeletal system. If you haven't already, be sure to take just a moment. It only takes a second. Uh, just head over to the wherever you're listening to this podcast. Leave us a five-star review. only takes a moment, but it helps so much as we're trying to get the word out, and I'd much appreciate it as you do that. Also, uh, good luck in all your studies. I know that it's a lot of work. I know that as you're headed to clinical or whatever it is you're doing as you're listening to this podcast, you've got a lot on your plate. I want to make it as easy as possible to tackle this exam. So be sure to check out ptfinalexam.com for all of the great tips, tricks, and courses we have available to help you get through the exam. All right, with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion. Have a fabulous day, everyone. Will Crane fist pumps all around, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks.